Hello, good morning everybody. My name is Anubhav Swami and in this short video I'm going to show you next generation firewall scalable design in Azure. This is part two of this video series. If you have not watched part one, I would suggest you to watch that part first before continuing this demo. In this demo, I'm going to show you north, south, east, west traffic inspection with our scalable design. I have three tier architecture in Azure Cloud and each subnet has its own UDR. And next up in UDR is internal load balancers, virtual IP address. Internal load balancer faces internal interface of firewall and it is responsible for scaling out outbound connections and scaling east-west traffic. On the other side, I have external load balancer as well which is responsible for scaling my inbound connections. So in part one, I talked about complete design, how this design is deployed, what are the key components of this particular design, how you enable probing, how you enable natting on the device for allowing uh, probe packets, and how you place UDRs. So if you have not seen that video, this demo will not make any sense for you. Please go ahead and watch that video first before continuing this one. In this demo, I'm going to connect those pieces together and show you all the components and how these components will operate together to give you scalable design. Let's quickly log into portal.azure.com and I will show you functioning of entire scalable design. Hello, welcome back. I will show you all the components involved in this. This is my resource group, my virtual network, external load balancer, internal load balancer, UDR for web, UDR for app, database UDR, and I have web server, application server, and then database server. Now let me uh, talk about this particular design and show you my VNet first. Inside my VNet, if you go ahead and check all the subnets, I have around seven subnet, management, diagnostic, outside, inside, web, web app, and database. I will now show you other components as well. So I will quickly log into external load balancer and show you configuration of external load balancer. First of all, I'll show you probes. Now these probes are defined on port 22. I have backend pool. Inside backend pool, I have um, uh, two firewalls and this uh, probe uh, backend pool points to external interface of my firewalls. I have load balancing rule as well on port 80. So any traffic hitting on port 80 on this front end IP address will be sent to firewalls and it is load balanced. Now I have uh, internal load balancer as well. Uh, I will quickly show you um, health probe for internal load balancer. It is on port 22 and in the backend pool you will see internal interface of the firewall. I also have front end IP address which is a uh, next hop in all my UDRs. This is a load balancing rule on uh, uh, for all ports, so I have enabled HA port functionality for this particular rule. Now let me quickly show you web UDR. Inside web UDR, you will notice that for all the subnets, next hop is uh, 10.14.3.100, which is uh, web of my uh, uh, internal load balancer. S similarly, I have uh, assigned uh, web as my next hop for in all, all the UDRs. So similar kind of UDRs is applied on each subnet where next hop is virtual interface of the internal, virtual IP address of the internal load balancer. Now this is again, just to recap our design, uh, this is what we have. Uh, we have three subnets, web, app, and database with UDRs, and I have two firewalls, uh, in, in, and I have external load balancer facing external interface of these firewalls, internal load balancer facing internal interfaces of the firewall. Now let me quickly log into Firepower Management Center and show you under the device management uh, management that both firewalls are managed by FMC and this FMC is hosted in uh, Amazon Web Services. If you look at interfaces, I have outside and inside interface initialized. I have IP addresses assigned to it. Now, let me show you routing. I have uh, routes. 
I have static routes and these routes uh, are added on the firewall. If you want to view more details about uh, these routes, why these routes are there, you can watch part one where I explained about all the uh, routes. Now let me go to second firewall and show you uh, interface uh, config of uh, second firewall and I will show you routing part of it as well. Now this is really important to understand why these routes are there so I would highly recommend you to watch part one. I'm going to add link to part one in description of this video. Apart from this I have for this particular demo purpose I have allowed everything. So it is permit IP any any and I have NAT policies as well. So these NAT policies are required to allow probes to allow north south traffic. So uh, again if you want to uh, know more details about these routes please watch part one. This is uh, this demo is just to show you config and working of this particular design. So I have NAT policy defined for each firewall. Now let's uh, quickly log into all the devices. I have my web server, application server, database server. I have access to both firewalls. Uh, I'm going to ping uh, one of the servers from web server. I'm going to ping 5.4 which is my application server and I you can see that traffic is received on firewall 2. Now I will ping another server from database server. I'm going to ping 4.4 which is my uh, web server you will see that traffic is received on first firewall so actively both firewalls are participating in traffic inspection and traffic forwarding so this is kind of a active active model where uh, traffic is load balanced across all the firewalls in the backend pool so I'm just showing you few more uh, tests so that you can see that traffic is getting distributed among firewall 1 and firewall 2. I'm For this particular demo I'm just using two firewalls. You can add multiple firewalls to it as well. So again uh, these are few ping tests. I can uh, test uh, TCP as well. I have tested TCP and it worked pretty fine so there is no problem with the uh, stateful uh, connection as well. So I'm going to stop my firewall 2 just to show you that it, it is automatically removed from uh, load balancer. So uh, the moment I switch off my firewall and if I go back to my external load balancer, you will see that firewall 2 is removed out of back and pool. So it is automatically detected because we have probes going through it. Okay, so now I will show you in the internal load balancer as well. Same thing is going to happen there as well. Internal load balancer will also remove that firewall from back in pool because, uh, because uh, it is not no more passing probes. Now let's go back to our servers and this time let's initiate traffic. Firewall 2 is switched off so it is not available now. Still I can pass traffic because I still have one firewall in my back in pool. So suggestion is to add multiple firewalls, minimum start with two firewall and if you are looking for higher resiliency add start up with three firewalls and then uh, according to your requirement you can scale out as and when required. So using this particular design you can scale your uh, inbound traffic because uh, external load balancer is taking care of that and uh, you can scale your outbound traffic because internal t uh, load balancer is ca taking care of that traffic and you can enable east-west traffic as well. So everything is covered in this particular uh, design. So now firewall 2 is shut down. I can go ahead and switch it back up uh, so that it is again uh, one uh, added back to the back end pool. So it is simple if you want to add another firewall you can deploy new firewall add it to your firepower management center push same kind of configuration to it and add it to the load balancer to your external and internal load balancer. The moment it is um, um, it, it is added in the back end pool it will also pass traffic. I hope you enjoyed looking at all the components together and how we enable this model. So just to recap, 
in this vnet i have three tier architecture and i have udr attached to each subnet Next hop in UDR is internal load balancer. Internal load balancer is responsible for scaling my outbound and east-west traffic. Apart from that, external load balancer is responsible for scaling my inbound traffic. All front-end addresses are assigned on the external load balancer, so users will hit external IP or front-end IP. And on the internal load balancer side, I have a front end IP address, which is a virtual IP address, and that IP address is next hop in all the UDRs. So in description of this video, I'm going to add link for my first video where I talked about entire design. I talked about firewall config, uh, probes, NAT, and routes. And apart from that, I also talked about traffic flow and how we translate traffic when it is ingress traffic or when it is egress traffic. So I will uh, really appreciate if you watch that video one more time just to refresh your uh, memories and then watch this demo again so that it will make complete sense for you. I'm going to shortly add link uh, in description of this video where I will add an ARM template so that you can deploy these firewalls with standard IP addresses. So I hope you enjoyed this particular video and thank you for watching.